Hello there, my name is Gary Sims, and this is Gary Explains. Now, as you know, I do like the Raspberry Pi Pico. I've even written a multitasking operating system for it. But what would you say to a Raspberry Pi Pico compatible board, a clone if you want to say that, but with USB-C connector, a micro SD card slot reader, eight megabytes of flash, all for the same price, that's just $5. Well, if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so we've already seen clone Pico boards from China. I've got a video here on the channel called Attack of the Clones. So these are very much the same thing. It's a Pico board with the same processor, but you get more flash memory, you get a USB-C and so on. However, today what we're gonna look at is the Marble Pico. This is a Raspberry Pi Pico clone with USB-C and eight megabytes of flash, but it's made in Europe, not in China. So really it's a Raspberry Pi Pico, but better, based on the same RP, Raspberry Pi 2040 chip produced by the Raspberry Pi Foundation with the same pinout as the Raspberry Pi Pico, but with the following upgrades. Mm. Upgrades. First of all, it's USB-C, not micro USB. Really, we should be moving fully over to USB-C now for just about everything, so this is a good decision. It has the I2C Stemmer QT or Quick Connector, and I'll demonstrate that. It allows you to plug in I2C devices just by plugging it into a plug reel. No wiring, no kind of soldering, no nothing. You just plug it in and you can start using the different things, and these are available from a variety of different uh, producers, including from Adafruit. It's got a built-in micro SD card reader, so you don't need a separate one. It's already there for you. It's got eight megabytes of flash compared to two megabytes on the Pico. There's a LiPo battery charging circuit. It also has a separate 3.3 volt stabilizer feeding the ADC VREF, which is the reference voltage for more accurate noise-free analog to digital conversion. And here's the great thing, it's the same price, still $5. So this is the pinout. We're gonna go through this more detail in a moment, but as you can see, it's the same Raspberry Pi Pico size with the same idea with the pins down the side and the connector at one end. So what do we get? So we've got a micro SD card adapter. This adapter can be used to interface a micro SD card on port SPI, that's SPI uh, zero. If it's not used, it can be disconnected using the solder jumpers on the back of the board, and I'll show you those in a minute. If you want to see how you can use a micro SD card slot with a microcontroller, I have a whole separate video about that here on this channel. Of course, it's got the same RP2040 microcontroller. that's a dual ARM Cortex-M0+, Plus, running at 133 megahertz with 264K of SRAM. You've got SPI, I2C, and so on, and these can be overclocked as well. And down here on the left-hand side, we can see there's also an external eight megabytes of flash compared to the two megabytes that you get on the normal Raspberry Pi Pico. So moving down to the second part of the board, we can see that it has a circuit for charging LiPo batteries. That's great because if you build up the right circuit, you can build up a device, you can charge up the battery, you can then use it and then plug it in to charge up uh, using the USB-C. And so you, just like you would charge up any kind of you know device, whether it's headphones or, or anything like that, you can build a micro controller based project that you can charge up a battery. When the battery goes flat, you can charge it up again and keep using it. So that's a really, really useful feature, particularly if you're trying to actually build something that you don't need plugged into the mains. As I mentioned earlier, there's a dedicated 3.3 voltage uh, a regulator that gives you smoother readings on the analog to digital pins. We've got USB-C, and of course USB-C, you can turn it up either way around, so that's really useful. And then you've got this uh, Quick or Stemmer QT uh, plug which is up here, and basically you can just plug in any of those compatible devices. I'm gonna show you a demo in a minute using a temperature sensor. Don't have to use a breadboard, don't have to do any soldering, I just plug it straight in, and I've got a temperature sensor that I can use. And then finally, on the back here, we can see there are these solder jumpers. So in these different places here, you can break different connections, okay, so that you don't need to have that thing activated. So if you're in a power sensitive situation and you don't want the micro SD card slot to be even present, you can just get rid of it. If you don't want one of the LEDs to be present, you can get rid of it. And also there is the, pa uh, the pads here for connecting up that battery. 
Okay, when it comes to software, it's fully compatible with the same ecosystem as you get with the Raspberry Pi Pico. So that's MicroPython, CircuitPython, Arduino, and of course the native uh, Raspberry Pi Pico C and C++ SDK. And here is an example of Thony running, so that's MicroPython. And down here in the output, we can see the uh, readings for the humidity and temperature from that sensor. And that's just the source code you need to go around in a loop here, basically reading the humidity and the temperature. And I'll demo that for you in a moment. So have a, just a quick look side by side at the difference between the two. Same price, this is why the great uh, thing is here. $5, $5, same microcontroller. One's got the old Pico's got micro USB, but now we've got USB-C. And then what we've we got extra, we've got this I squared C connector, the stem QT or the quick one. We've got micro SD card slot. We've got a second voltage regulator for better A to D conversions. We've got eight megabytes of flash and we've got the LiPo charging circuit all for the same price, $5. So it really is a Raspberry Pi Pico, but better and it's made in Europe. Okay, demo time. So as I said, it's gonna be MicroPython. You saw a quick screenshot of it there uh, running uh, Thonic. I'm using an AHT21 temperature and humidity sensor. It's connected via the I squared C connector. And all I do is print out the humidity and the temperature every few seconds. It also flashes the uh, LED. Okay, so what about availability? Well, you can buy it from the website Ardu Shop. That's like the Arduino shop and it's a Romanian shop. So ardushop.ro, I've used them several times very reliable, very professional. $5 approximately for each uh, unit, depending on you know, your currency conversion. Shipping within Romania, Bulgaria, and Hungary is very, very good. Uh, local kind of prices. Uh, I got mine for just a very low price um, and came within about two, three days. Shipping to the rest of Europe is higher. So I did a quick look on the website and it's about 22 euros. Now, obviously that's a huge, huge problem for shipping. So if you were shipping to, let's say, Germany or France or Italy, Italy, it would cost you 22 euros. However, if you order multiple units, that price seems to save the same. So maybe if you want to club together with some friends, maybe if you want to sell a few uh, online, maybe get yourself 10 or 20 of these. And then of course the per unit shipping cost comes right down. Rest of the world, well, that's kind of a question mark, question mark, probably gonna be very high shipping. And yes, as it was last time I covered this particular website, the English uh, translation of the website is not as good as the Romanian one. So really your mileage may uh, vary when you're trying to buy these uh, in English and then ship to the rest of the world. However, if you're in Europe and you're very, or you're a bordering country to Romania, then this is a very, very good bargain. Okay, so there you have it, the Marble Pico. As I said, if you are in Europe and you're close by, that is quite a good uh, offer. You may find it better to ship directly from China if you are outside of Europe. Let me know in the comments below what you think about that. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, I invite you. Hey, stick around. Subscribe to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.